In this video, we're going to discuss covalent radii for atoms and determining what is a bond in a molecule. So a covalent radius can be thought to be effectively an atomic radius for bonding. So we all know the caveats about uh, that atoms don't really have well-defined radii, their electron distributions fall off exponentially, but there's really no start or end to the atom. It's just kind of an arbitrarily defined cutoff that ever defines a radius. And this particular choice for arbitrary cutoff is the covalent radius. So covalent radius is helpful because it has properties like if the distance between two atoms, Rij, as we defined in the previous video, if that's less than the covalent radius for atom I plus the covalent radius for atom J times, using the asterisk there as a time symbol, times some kind of fudge factor there to account for the fact that it's not exact. If the, if the two atoms are within the sum of their covalent radii times a constant factor, then I and J are bonded according to our criterion. Let's see, then... I and J are bonded. That's what we're going to be saying here. Okay, so this factor K here, I could call a threshold factor, which I typically set to be a value of about 1.2, 1.20. Okay, and then these covalent radii typically have values uh, on the order of an angstrom. So for hydrogen, uh, 0 0.37. For carbon, 0 0.77. For nitrogen and oxygen, 0 0.75 and 0 0.73 angstroms. And pretty much every uh, value in every atom in the periodic table has some value that you could use that would be a reasonable value to plug into equations like this. Okay, so for these covalent radii, if we want to determine all the bonds in a molecule, let's say we have n atoms in a molecule, like we do in a typical XYZ file, the number n at the top of that file. How many pairs of atoms are we going to have? We're going to have n times n plus 1 over two pairs of atoms, which means that we have in computer science notation this script O, order n squared pairs. So this means as, as n gets very large, asymptotically what it's, what it's approaching is that the number of pairs scales quadratically with the number of atoms. So if we have n squared, a very large number of atoms, we have approximately, if we have n uh, number of atoms, which is a very large number, we're going to have approximately n squared. Uh, we're going to have approximately n squared uh, results there. So if we double the size of the system, we have approximately four times as many pairs of atoms to deal with. Approximately, again, it's all asymptotics in that note in that notation. So as we've said there, we have <clears throat> about n squared pairs, but we only have n squared bonds or we only have n bonds because we're only going to have n bonds. So if we have n squared pairs and n bonds, this is because of just the realities of chemistry. So we know for things like carbon, it has less than or equal to four bonds typically. There are, of course, exceptions, but typically for a regular, well-behaved, organic molecule, covalently bound thing, it has less than or equal to four. Nitrogen, three. Oxygen, two. And for things like hydrogen and the halides, you have one. So obviously, adding more atoms to the molecule isn't going to make more bonds appear to a given carbon atom. So that's approximately approximately equal there. So what we could do, in, what we're going to be doing in uh, future videos is adding in the number of angles and torsions, and those involve sets of three and four atoms. So you can imagine the number of uh, 
sets of three and sets of four is going to be cubic and quadratic, but the number of bonds and angles and torsions is only going to be linear. So we can we can decrease a lot of uh, computational work and and get a much uh, quicker answer for something like a very large molecule like a protein if in the first uh, searching through of the molecule for all these bond distances we build something that I'm going to call a bond tree. So this is just going to be a list of, th of what is bonded to what essentially. So let's use uh, ethane as an example. So we're going to have a carbon bonded to a carbon, and each of them is bonded to th three hydrogens. Okay, and we're going to number these from one to eight as they would be numbered in an XYZ file. So we're going to say one, two, then three, four, five will be bonded to atom to carbon one, and six, seven, eight are bonded to carbon two. Okay, so the type of object I'm talking about building for determining what your bonds are is going to look something like this. So if I number my lines here from 1 to 8, then in the XYZ file I have coordinates of my two carbons, then my six hydrogens. And what's the list of what they're, what they're bonded to if I compare these distances? So what's within the sum of their covalent radii times this fudge factor? So you're going to get 2, 3, 4, and 5 are bonded there. 2, 3, 4, 5. And for carbon 2, it is bonded to atom 1, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, and then for the hydrogens, 3, 4, and 5 are bonded to carbon 1. And 6, 7, and 8 are bonded to carbon 2. So now using this information, when we talk about bond angles and torsions, we don't have to search through all the sets of three and sets of four atoms. We only have to cleverly search through this type of tree, and it's going to be a, a linear scaling operation from there. So these are the types of things we, we generally type, like to think about in computer science and, uh, and computational chemistry are things like asymptotic scalings. These things will come up more and more as we get into more quantum chemistry methods. But I'm just introducing it now, uh, not so much for this topic, but just to get you primed in thinking about these types of things, about how things scale and how you can do things in a way which scales uh, more, more easily as the system size increases. Okay, so there's that molecule, as I said. Um, if we look at our extensions here, the XYZs that it came from. There's those eight atoms, as I said. They're their XYZ coordinates. And they're gonna, it's, this molecule is going to have a D3D symmetry. It's a staggered ethane molecule, if that, so if that means anything to you. So we can measure things like the bond length of the carbon-carbon. If I can select it. Let me see if I can zoom in more. Okay, click there. Okay, guess I can't at the moment. It's being very fickle. So let's go to our Jupyter notebook here. So I've got uh, this directory here in, called coding, and it's got four subdirectories, uh, one with geometries. That's where I have my XYZ file coming from. It's got one with uh, IPython or Jupyter notebooks which is what I used in the previous video to execute that hello world, a previous video to execute that hello world script. And I've got a directory called scripts where I've got a Python script here, which is going to compute our bond tree and bond links. So in this demo here, I've got inside this file something that's about a 150 line Python script. Uh, in the end, it's actually not that complicated. I'll step you through some of the steps here. You don't have to worry about knowing every single thing, but the point is to just see the overall trend of what's going on here. Okay, so there's this uh, value, this bond threshold that I talked about. I've set that to a value of 1.2, as I showed setting that value of k to 1.2 there. Okay, I've got my covalent radii. You can see those first four values are the first four values that I listed down here, 0 0.37, 77, 75, 73, etc. And then I've got those listed for a number of atoms as well. I got these from an inorganic chemistry textbook listed there. 
And then there's going to be various functions in this Python script, um, Python functions that are going to allow me to uh, read in this particular XYZ file and chop it into a two-dimensional array. And, from, and using that array, I'm going to be able to read in the geometry into a, a, a structure that's convenient for me. That's going to be an array that has uh, both the atom types, which there's going to be, you know, C or H. And there's also going to be an array of coordinates, which is going to be a three uh, n by three array of all the x y z coordinates. Okay, and then I'm going to have an input where I say this file name. Um, it's not geometry analysis in this case. I named the file bonds. Uh, the bigger file that this is going to go into eventually is called geometry analysis. So it's going to be that bonds.py as I have that here here in the file name. Uh, these double dots indicate going up a directory up to this main directory here. So up to directory scripts bonds.py uh, geom hf.xyz. So this is that executed for the hydrogen fluoride from the previous video. Then there's a function to print the geometry if I choose to, a function to print the bond tree, a function to uh, print the list of bonds that I find. And I have math functions uh, calculating the distance between uh, two sets of points based on their coordinates, a function which is going to determine what the whole bond tree is, a function which is going to determine which things are bonded from the bond tree. And then the main block here, I get the file name from my input. As I can see there, the hf.xyz. I get the geometry from the file name, get the bond tree from the geometry. I get the bonds from the bond tree, and then I print the geometry, the bond tree, and the bonds. So let's execute this program here. So for the HF, uh, that's what it does there. Let's see if it results in the same type of uh, results that I that I put there for what I for what I wrote down in my file on the on the board. So I believe I called that ethane.xyz. I see up there. So Shift Enter to execute that. And it's printed out the original geometry, which is correct there. It's printed out in a different format, such that it has added an extra uh, zero at the end of each of those. But there's my bond tree, uh, 2345, 1678, 2345, 1678, 111222, and 111222. So it found seven bonds, uh, the carbon-carbon bond at 1.5121 angstroms, and all the carbon-hydrogen bonds are equal length at 1.094 angstroms. Okay, so that is the first step in a bigger program that we'll be building throughout this chapter, which is going to take this information from the XYZ file and then do a lot more analysis on it, things like getting the bond lengths, the bond angles, um, the torsion angles, center of mass, moment of inertia, uh, all of these sorts of interesting things we can get just from an XYZ file. And this is a general intro to computational chemistry showing you the types of ideas of how we think about computing with respect to molecules, how we turn those ideas into computer programs, and then how we run them and actually apply them to real molecules like this particular uh, ethane molecule of interest.